Thank your you. 21st book, Palestine, Peace, Not Apartheid. Let me read from page 215 of your book. A system of apartheid with two peoples occupying the same land but completely separated from each other, with Israelis totally dominant and suppressing violence by depriving Palestinians of their basic human rights. This is the policy now being followed. And last Sunday, you told the Louisville Colonel Journal, I would say that in many ways the treatment of the Palestinians by the Israeli occupying forces is as onerous and in some cases more onerous as the treatment of black people in South Africa by the apartheid government. Those are very strong words. They're exactly accurate. And I think I should point out quickly that the book refers to Palestine and not to Israel. And I also make clear in the book that the apartheid that is perpetrated now on the Palestinians in the occupied territories is not based on racism. It's based on the desire by a minority of Israelis for Palestinian land. And then the acquisition of that land, the occupation, the confiscation, and then the colonization of that land, they are perpetuating an absolute and total division between the Israelis living on Palestinian territory and the right of Palestinians to interrelate with any Israelis who are occupying their own land. So that word is, uh, is accurate for what the Israelis are doing uh, to the Palestinians on Palestinian territory. Uh, the Arabs that live in the occupied territories, which is not Israel's territory, but their own, are horribly abused. And I don't think anyone could go to the West Bank and Gaza or even to East Jerusalem and see what's happening now to the Palestinians that would disagree with my use of the word apartheid. As I read your book, this struck me, particularly from someone in political life. You wrote the following. There are constant and vehement political and media debates in Israel concerning its policies in the West Bank, but because of powerful political, economic, and religious forces in the United States, Israeli government decisions are rarely questioned or condemned. Voices from Jerusalem dominate in our media, and most American citizens are unaware of circumstances in the occupied territories. And then you went on to say, there's no doubt there is a strong aversion to criticizing Israel in this country. I wouldn't say it's all because of intimidation, but that is one factor. Yes. Do you disagree with that? Well, I won't ask you that. I'm, you're the one asking questions. But I don't think anyone could disagree with that. There, there, are, there are very few, if any, uh, voices in the political realm of Washington or in the major news media who would raise the kind of issues that are raised in this book. Why? I have said in the book, I don't know if it's intimidation or just reticence. Uh, there are some factors that are involved even in the religious circles, but it's completely, almost completely unacceptable in this country for any public official uh, to criticize the policies of Israel, even if they are horribly abusive against the Palestinians and this is an human rights. This is in effect taking on the, quote, Israeli lobby or the Jewish lobby. That's part. The Jewish lobby may be part of it. I didn't say that in the book, but I think that's part of it. But even, you know, I don't think that um, the Washington Post or the New York Times or NBC or others are intimidated by, by the Jewish lobby. But I think there's a reticence even in public fora to describe both sides of the issues in the West Bank.